Hi, this is episode 67 of Krondos. I'm your host, Jordan Hudgens. I'm a Ruby dev and the CTO of the DevCamp platform. Today we're going to cover one of my favorite algorithm design patterns, which is the divide and conquer algorithm process. There is a really practical reason why divide and conquer algorithms are so popular, and I'm going to discuss those reasons in detail throughout the rest of this guide. Before we can get into the details on what makes divide and conquer algorithms so great, let's walk through what they are. I'm going to start by giving a real-world example. In past episodes, I've explained my process for learning new topics. For example, if I want to learn about logarithms, I'll go to the logarithm page on Wikipedia. From there, I start reading the guide. Each time I get to a topic I'm unfamiliar with, I'll research the new topic. After I understand the new topic, I'll go back to the logarithm page and I'll keep reading. I'll continue this process until I understand exactly what I'm studying. Essentially, I'm taking a divide and conquer approach to learning. I focus on a topic and then I break that topic into subcomponents. After I have a clear understanding of each of the subtopics, I typically understand the main one that I was researching in the first place. So here's a dead simple explanation for how divide and conquer algorithms work. They take a problem, such as sorting, they break it into subtasks. They perform work on each one of those subtasks, and then they end by combining all of the components back together. If that's still a little fuzzy, let's take a look at one of the most popular divide and conquer algorithms in the computer science space, which is quicksort. Quicksort works by taking a collection, breaking the collection into smaller pieces. It sorts the smaller pieces, combines all of the small pieces into a final sorted collection. There are a number of benefits to using a divide and conquer approach when it comes to algorithm development. Some of the key benefits are first and foremost speed. A well-constructed divide and conquer algorithm is typically very fast. For example, the quicksort algorithm is literally exponentially faster than its non-divide and conquer alternative, such as insertion or selection sort. Divide and conquer algorithms also simplify complexity. In the same way that I use a similar approach when it comes to learning difficult topics, divide and conquer algorithms can help you simplify a process and break it down into easier to understand components. Many problems in computer science are incredibly challenging when you look at them as a whole. However, if you can break a complex topic down into small, easy to manage chunks, you'll discover that even difficult problems can be solved and more importantly, understood. When it comes to getting a job as a developer, you'll want to have a clear understanding of the popular divide and conquer algorithms. Here's a list of the popular ones that you may use, but you should at least become familiar with. First is binary search, then quick sort, merge sort, which is also pretty similar, closest pair, and then Strassen's algorithm. There are a number of other divide and conquer algorithms, but that's a list of some of the most popular ones that you may be asked during a coding interview. I hope that this has been a helpful guide to understanding how the divide and conquer algorithm design pattern works. Good luck with the coding.